Hey guys, how you doing? So today I want to talk to you about how to get the most out of your headlocks and your matlocks. Um, you know, there was no secret to how much success I had with them over the summer this past year uh, and the fall before that, going back to 2016. Um, so I want to give you guys a couple tips, a couple tricks you can do to get more out of your lures. Um, you know, and the first thing is when you will go from the, the moment you buy that lure, brand new lure, uh, don't tee the hooks. Um, I was teeing them at first and my hookup percentage was bad, stopped teeing them, my hookup percentage got much better, and that leads right into ways to breaking them in. A lot of guys want to tee them because they're worried about ruining the finish on their $100 crankbait. Um, the, the thing is, you kind of want to ruin it. Um, and the reason for that is, is as you expose that wood, that wood's going to absorb water. And as that wood absorbs water, it adds more density to the lure. So, you know, the more dense that piece of wood is, or the more that bait weighs, for a better term, um, the more action you're going to get out of it. I have a, there it is, 10 inch headlock right there. Um, great bait, but it runs completely different than this 10 inch headlock. They both are, they both have no differences other than probably the density of the wood. This uh, TRO Okaboji Perch, it, uh, it runs more like a headlock. It doesn't have a lot of wander at three miles, actually has no wander at three miles an hour. It has no erratic kick at three miles an hour. It has a little bit of a wiggle at three five. It has a little bit of wiggle and wander at four, but once I break four five with this bait, it runs completely different than that headlock does. It still doesn't do, oh, I'm hooked. Hooked again. The hooks are sharp. Sharpen your hooks. Um, it's still, uh, I lost my train of thought. Headlock, matlock, yes. At four and a half miles an hour, it will uh, really start getting that erratic wobble and it'll start kicking out more and shooting back and forth where this one, you can just feel them picking them up, how much heavier this one is than that Okaboji Perch. This one, if I'm at four miles an hour and this one is on my speed up rod, it'll blow out. It will pop out of the water when I'm running 20 feet of line, let's say, and that has that lure down maybe eight feet at, at four miles an hour. Um, that thing will pop out of the water. So where this orange one for me shines, is at that kind of uh, uh, three, five, three, maybe even a little under three when I get into late November. That thing has a real, it doesn't take speed for it to be erratic because of how dense it is. Um, <clears throat> so I could, with work, I could get this one to run more like my orange one by, by letting, if I got a heck of a glare there, See, it's starting to get that hook rash through the wood. If I wanted this one to run better at a slower speed, I'll allow that wood to keep wearing through. And knowing at the beginning of the day, it may not have the same action that it will at the end of the day. Um, but that's just what comes with buying wood baits. Wood's different. Every piece of wood's different. Every lure's different. That's why it's very important for you guys to take the time and understand your baits. Um, what I'll do is when I get a new bait, and if I have the free time to do it, I'll go out on a clear body of water. I will run it with, say, about 10 feet of line out where I can still see that lure. And I will, <coughs> and I'll run it at different speeds. Just see where the sweet spot for that bait is. But also understand that as you, which one, this one here, um, as you break these baits in and the more you run them, the more the hole if I can get that, see how worn out that hole is there? That pin is, I'm not doing a very good job here. You can see that pin just kind of just floats in there because this thing has been run a lot versus say this one, which is a much newer one. See how tight that is there? That pin is very tight in the hole there. Um, the more you run them, the more they'll break in. You know, this uh, this one here has been my best lure of all matlocks I've ever owned. Um, but it continues to get more and more and more erratic 
as I keep running it and that hole kind of keeps wearing itself out. So, you know, the, it, it takes some time. It takes some effort. You know, the biggest <clears throat> to get the most out of your matlocks and the biggest piece of advice I can give is truly understand what each one does. Each one's going to have a little bit different of a dive curve. Um, not drastically, but enough to where if you're trolling over the tops of weeds and you know the difference in, you know, say what difference three feet of line can do, that could be the difference in catching fish right there. <clears throat> um, they're also going to have different actions. They're going to have different actions at different speeds. Just because one doesn't have the action you're looking for at three miles an hour, um, it might be a summertime speed bait where, you know, one of your other ones may have that special kick at three miles an hour. And that's what I'm really looking for out of those baits in November is, uh, <clears throat> is for that real erratic kind of stutter step wander. Um, and I think maybe once we get into, uh, back into open water, I'll show you guys exactly what I mean by that. But there's some tips. Hope to help you guys out and get you guys some more information on how to catch more fish throughout the whole winter. I'll be doing some stuff on, you know, what I do as far as preparation and taking care of rods, reels, uh, anything from, you know, the right files that I use, different lines that I use, just more tips to help you guys uh, become better at, uh, at musky fishing. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.